Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. My name is Leanne and I travel full time in an RV with my husband, two of my daughters and two dogs. If family RV life interests you, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so that you can be notified of any new uploads. Today I have four fall comfort food recipes all done in the Instant Pot and a bonus recipe at the end, so be sure to stick around for that. And don't worry if you don't have an Instant Pot because all four of these recipes can be made in a slow cooker. All right, let's do this. I'm using the slow cook function on my Instant Pot for this chili. Slow cook works just like a regular slow cooker. Less, normal, and more are the equivalent slow cooker settings to warm, low, and high. This chili is very basic, just some onions and ground beef, spices, tomatoes, and two types of beans. I'm gonna use saute first to brown up the meat and then add the spices. I love slow cooked chili, it makes the house smell yummy and the flavor is always so much better. I start with a little salt and some fresh ground black pepper to taste and some diced red onion. For the spices I always eyeball it, for the coriander I do um, probably a couple teaspoons. and some chipotle. Uh, I guess I'd probably do maybe about a quarter teaspoon because my eight-year-old doesn't like it too spicy. For the chili powder, I do two to three tablespoons of good chili powder. The best chili powder is the bags of chili powder in the Mexican spices section at the grocery store. I let the spices cook for a minute or two with the meat before adding any of the tomatoes. Oh, and I also added um, chopped garlic, but for some reason I missed getting a shot of that, but I assure you there is no chili cooked in my house without garlic. Now add a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes an eight ounce can of tomato sauce, and one to two tablespoons of tomato paste. And give that a good stir, get everything mixed together before adding the beans. I always use chili beans, which are just pinot beans with added spices because I like it flavorful. You Texans watching, don't come for me in the comments. I'm from Colorado and we put beans in our chili. If the chili don't have beans, then it's hot dog sauce, okay? That's just how we roll. So I just give everything a good stir and I'm gonna slow cook on high for four hours. So I just wanted to pop in here real quick and let you guys know that this recipe was originally for a slow cooker, uh, but I converted it to an instant pot because I don't have a slow cooker. I first saw this recipe on another YouTube channel. Rebecca London shared it on her channel. She shared the slow cooker version and I will leave a link to her video in the description below, as well as a link to the original written recipe on justapinch.com. And there's a ton of really great recipes on there, so definitely check that out. You only need six ingredients for this recipe. Two cans cream of chicken soup, one 24 ounce bag of Reams frozen home style egg noodles. I do not recommend straying from this brand. I tried a Walmart store brand because they were out of the Reams and it was terrible. The noodles did not cook all the way for some reason, but Reams is consistently perfect every time. You'll need eight boneless skinless chicken thighs or four chicken breasts, about three pounds one stick of unsalted butter and salt and pepper to taste, and four cups of chicken stock. Once the chicken is in, add salt and pepper and one cup of your chicken stock.
pressure cook on high for eight minutes. And when the time is up, do a quick release of the pressure and either shred or break up the chicken how you like. I prefer bigger pieces so it's more like chicken and dumplings. Now I'll add the remaining chicken stock. Then add the entire bag of frozen noodles and the two cans of cream of chicken soup. Cook on high pressure for five minutes and allow the pressure to release naturally. Okay, wait, back up. I forgot to add the stick of butter. When you put in the noodles and the cream of chicken soup, you also add the stick of butter. By the way, if you leave the stick of butter out, it's no big deal. I forgot it this time and it was still delicious. Next up is Italian sausage penne. You're gonna love this one. It's done in under 30 minutes. All you need is Italian sausage, crushed tomatoes, tomato paste, Italian spices, penne regatta, garlic, and of course, an Instant Pot. While my Instant Pot is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and crush up some fennel seed. And if you've never tried fennel seed, by the way, for your Italian dishes, you definitely should. Fennel is what gives pizza sauce that distinct Italian flavor. I like to add a drizzle of olive oil to the pan and then drop in the sausage and get it nice and browned up. It's important to get all those brown bits scraped off the bottom so that during pressure cooking you don't get the burn notice. And plus that's just added flavor. Um, you can add a touch of water or wine to loosen it up if you're having trouble. And for the Italian seasonings, I usually do about two teaspoons or so of each of oregano, parsley, and basil. And I like a lot of garlic, so I do about two heaping teaspoons of chopped garlic. Then I add one tablespoon of tomato paste and the fennel that I crushed earlier, I go ahead and add that in and then stir everything up a little bit. Next, pour the penne right on top of the meat and don't stir. Pour a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes on top of the pasta and don't stir. Then we're gonna add one and a half cans of water. So here's half. And then a whole can right on top and remember don't stir. Pressure cook on high for eight minutes. When you first take the lid off it looks really watery but I promise you it will thicken up. And the pasta is perfectly cooked. Crazy how that thickens up, right? Like, it was so watery, but and that's it. You might need to add salt. So I had some leftover penne because that pot does make a, a lot and a lot of times we don't want to eat it for three days so um, I put some of it in a glass container with a lid and put a little bit of cheese on top and stuck it in the freezer and I pulled it out yesterday so it's completely thawed out um, but I, I pulled it out and stuck it in the fridge for it to thaw and I'm just gonna cook it up tonight in the oven so it's a great way to um, you know not waste anything and then have a nice quick meal on a busy night. I like to add a little bit of water to pastas like this that I'm reheating because it helps to make sure that the pasta doesn't get dry, especially in the oven. Just 
just a little bit. I know it seems weird, but I swear it works like a charm and keeps it from getting dry. I'm gonna bake this at 375 for about 30 minutes until it's bubbly and it, pretty much until it looks done, but 30 minutes is about right. Baking in a RV oven is not necessarily the same as every other oven. One of the biggest differences is you set your temperature, but there's nothing that tells you if it's up to temp yet. It doesn't beep, just nothing. So I bought this on Amazon. It's just a laser uh, thermometer and I just open up the oven and point it to the back. Oh, there we go. 336. Okay. So I have a little ways to go before it's 375. Um, but a lot of times I'll even just put it in when it says that temperature because it feels pretty hot and especially since I'm just reheating. But for baking, you know, breads and things like that, cakes, um, this is definitely nice to have. And I'll leave a link in the description below. You definitely need a pizza stone too. I used to burn everything until I got that. If you've watched my video this far, first, thank you. Um, but I would love it if you leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite fall comfort food is. What do you like to make? Um, it helps the algorithm. It helps my channel. And also it helps other people. You know, sometimes we get in this rut of just making the same thing over and over. And um, I would love it if you guys just share your ideas with each other and even me, because I could use some new ideas too. I'm kind of in a rut myself. So leave me a comment down below. For this recipe, I'm using the slow cook function on my Instant Pot and the glass Instant Pot lid. Hands down, the best accessory you can buy, and as always, links in the description. Another super easy recipe, pretty much just toss in the smoked ham hocks, four cups pinto beans, and about eight cups of water. You need at least enough water to reach the max line on the Instant Pot liner. I usually go a little above this line because I think the beans come out better. I put the lid on and slow cook on high or more on the Instant Pot for about five to six hours. When the beans are done, just remove the ham hocks and separate the meat from the bone and then return the meat to the pot. So cornbread always accompanies beans perfectly, but have you ever had fried cornbread? It is so good. I mean, delicious. And it's super easy to make. Just a disclaimer, this is not my usual recipe, but I wanted to try it with this jalapeno cornmeal that I picked up in the old mill area of Pigeon Forge, which is a really neat place to visit, by the way. So if you're ever in the Pigeon Forge area, I highly suggest it. And they have the best moonshine. It's freshly ground, stone ground, I believe. Don't quote me on that. The cornmeal that I use is, is um, ground much more fine, and so it doesn't have the, the graininess or crunchiness, I guess. These came out really good, but definitely not as good as my OG recipe. So just much more tender, and then I also chop up pickled jalapenos to put in the batter, and it just gives so much more flavor, makes all the difference. However, these were good and they did go really well with the beans. You just need buttermilk and self-rising cornmeal. It's one cup cornmeal to half a cup of buttermilk. Then you just mix it up and your batter should be the consistency of a thick pancake batter. And then you just deep fry them. I did these right on the Blackstone, which I had never tried before, but will definitely do again.
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed, and I'll see you next time. She ch <laughs> or not cr <laughs> so no to the